life is meaningless until you define it. There's no universal meaning to life. The beauty is that you get to define it. The difficulty is also that you get to define it because it feels hard to define. But if we go back to, if you think back to when you were a kid, three, four, five, six, and even if those of us had you know, rough childhoods and you know, didn't have that many happy moments, if you, if you can think back to some of your happier moments, happiest moments. We didn't question the meaning of life. We just existed. We didn't have to be taught how to play. We just played. We didn't have to be taught how to laugh. We would just find things funny and laugh or joyful and laugh. You didn't have to be taught how to be happy. You just had things that made you happy. It's not that Life was just so simple and thus the meaning is more obvious. It was that we were just so in tune with what we needed, with how we felt, with what mattered. Eating when we were hungry, being, you know, happy and joyful when something made us happy and joyful in the world. And interacting with whatever we were interacting with in whatever way we wanted to interact. And the knowledge may not, we may not have had the words and the knowledge to articulate, here is what makes life meaningful. But we understood at an innate visceral level what mattered, what was meaningful to us, what made a life good. So it's sometimes, you know, really entertaining and oftentimes so true when we read these, you know, BuzzFeed type lists of 25 things kids say about what makes, you know, life worth it. And it's like, hug my mom, you know, or like play with my Legos, whatever it may be. They're these really pure, seemingly pure things, but they don't change really when we get to be an adult the things we kind of say may evolve and might not be legos anymore or your favorite food might not be like eating peanut butter with your hands but fundamentally it's not that different universally all of us just want to be happy all of us want to live good lives all of us want to feel like it was purposeful and meaningful. And the self-definition of meaning is an incredible opportunity for us to decide for ourselves what matters to us. That can be, I wake up in a place with inspiring views every day. That could be, I eat, you know, vegetables and fruit every day. I hug my loved ones. I take time to acknowledge other humans in the world. I said hello to a stranger. Those are all things that can make life valuable. I think sometimes we overcomplicate this notion of meaning and value and purpose in our lives. It's not to say it's not work to be done, to filter through all the noise of what we're bombarded with every day, from advertising messages to random content on social media to the latest devastation in the news. There's a lot of noise to sift through, to take in if you choose and figure out what is worth you actually holding on to. But in the end, it's still our job to decide, no matter what the marketers are telling us, and no matter what the quote, quote, thought leaders are telling us matters, are we employing our own agency to decide what matters? Are we then constructing our own life around our own definition? 
Are we doing the work to define it? There are some core pieces. Where do you live? That can be both the home, the environment, but place. What does place mean to you? What does your environment mean to you? People. Who are the people you want in your life? What are the qualities of those people that you want to engage with? From family to closest friends all the way to strangers. What are the values that, you know, draw you to the type of people you're drawn to? Certainly our profession and our work, whatever we call our work. If we don't have to work, awesome. But even if we don't have to work and we have enough money, there's still something that we do as our like output in the world. It could mean that like you're a parent. It could mean that you volunteer. Like it doesn't have to be paid. It just means what are you engaging in your brain intellectually to produce in the world? And then there's broadly, these are all P's because it's easier for me to remember. The prosperity, money, your assets, all the things that make up your, you know, kind of resources. Um, what kind of money do you need in this world? What makes a good life? Like what are the expense, like what's, what are the resources that you need, both in terms of a dollar figure as well as the stuff you have to make life good? One that I, you know, it, it encompasses quite a few buckets, but broadly I say personal, which is all the things tied to our own experience in terms of like our health, our mental health, our physical health, our emotional health. So what do you need to be a healthy human, both up here and, you know, in your physical body? What do you have to do to take care of yourself so that you can live that meaningful life? And then passions, broadly, you don't have, even if you don't feel like you have a passion where you feel so like strong about hobbies, interests, just the things that you get excited about. What do you enjoy doing with your time? And then lastly, which I think we forget as adults, is play. What do you do just because it's fucking fun? There doesn't have to be a reason why you're doing it. It doesn't have to serve some grander purpose. You don't have to make money. It doesn't have to be a hobby. It can be a one-time thing. But what are the things that you do just because it brings you pure joy? Because it's fun. Like, Swinging on swings is not a hobby of mine, but anytime I see a swing on a playground, if I walk by a playground, I see a swing and I have even like two minutes to spare, I'll hop on the swing because there are so few things that can just so easily make you feel like you're flying. And so I hop on the swing and that's my play. But if you think about it, if you know the places, the kinds of places you like to be in, the people you want to be around, the work or output or impact you're creating in this world, whether or not you get paid for it in your profession, your um, personal like health and hygiene and, you know, all that stuff, your uh, passions and interests, your, shoot, what did I forget? Oh, your prosperity, your money, your assets. Those things are dialed. If you're, you know, if you're engaging with your interest, you feel like you've got enough money in this world, which you have to define, enough money and resources, and then you're playing on a regular basis and you're feeling life is fun. Like, what else do you need? And I know I just gave you seven categories and within those, there could be lots of things, but the distillation of that work doesn't have to be super complicated. It doesn't have to be a list of a hundred things. You just have to know what your relationship with those things are. You have to know like what components and ingredients you need in your life for life to have felt 
like it was purposeful. Forget about life, even just your day. What makes your day meaningful? Because sometimes in a day, you can't cover all your bases. Maybe you just took, took care of your health that day. Maybe it was a shit day otherwise, but you walked 30 minutes. Then great, it was a meaningful day. Doesn't make it any less meaningful because you didn't accomplish a whole bunch of other shit. Or if work has been really hard and like you're feeling taxed about money, but you see a good friend and they just give you a hug and you know that like they're there for you and they care about you and love you, that makes my day meaningful even if the rest of it was crap. We get to decide meaning. We got to define it. There's no absolute feeling. Even on our worst days, we don't have to choose to see it as the worst day ever, even if we think it is. We can do one thing that feels good to us. And maybe that way of, you know, taking care of yourself that day is having like a chocolate bar. And you're taking care of yourself for what you need for that day. And that can make life meaningful. I think we focus, you know, sometimes too big on the grand, too much on the grand, big grand things. When all around us, every single day, there's stuff that already makes life meaningful. But if we don't understand that that's what makes our life meaningful, if we haven't defined it, it's really easy to miss. There's some people that I've worked with who have missed the fact that they're already mi- living their most meaningful life. It's only after they define their dream life, they see it on the page, we talk through what makes a good day in the life for them. Then they're like, oh shit, I already have these things. I already do these things. I may want more things, but damn, 80% of it is there, which is an incredible feeling to feel like you already have most of everything you want. And a lot of us can be blind to that if we don't actually know what matters. So I hope you'll consider taking some time and just detailing in detail, writing down for yourself what's meaningful to you, what matters, so you can start to recognize it in your everyday life. And so even if you're still chasing big things, you can still recognize and see and experience the fact that your life is already meaningful.